Congratulations. And then also here on the Medcalf Drugs pregame show, I do think before we start, we always want to get to those stock tips. Almost like you, you'd read over the tips. First thing, keep special teams <laughs> special. Keegan Williams uh, last week doing a great job with punting. We know he can kick. The uh, Also, though, with the kickoffs, he did a good job with those. you got to keep those special, especially knowing Campbellsville has some speed on kickoffs and punts to try to keep them away from those burners and then tackle them if they do get the ball. Next, diversify the portfolio. Move the ball, move it around, and any time you can get it in number 80's hands, find new ways to do that, because Byron Kirkland is a difference maker when he has the ball in his hand. And we're going Byron Kirkland Lundy, right? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, Byron Kirkland Lundy. Yeah. All right, and also, lastly, and this is important one, extinguish the burners. Campbellsville's coming in here with a lot of speed, a lot of athleticism, including D1, D1 recruiting talent, number 11, DeAndre Weathers. They'll get him on the bubble screens, so be careful. It's an innocuous looking pass, but he can take it. He'll get blocking out in front of him, and he's gone before he can blink. Watch the jet sweeps. Deep moves as well. The quarterback has an arm to throw it 50 yards at least. Watch him on those deep moves and double moves. He may give you a little hitch and go, and he goes, he's gone. He can see with those burners, especially number 11. Love it, love it. The Stock Tony Stock Tips brought to you by Studel Financial. That's studelfinancial.com. Pre-game brought to you by Medcalf Drugs. The guys are about to run through the tunnel here. The cheerleaders are out there. Got a nice big patriotic sign. Appreciate that. Here come the Hornets. And you can hear the crowd roar. Also being entertained here by the dance team. Uh, talk about a group that's having a big time. They seem to be really enjoying what they're doing as well. But I do want to thank you for Stock Tony Stock Tips. I thought the second one, nice thematic connection. <laughs> thank you. The fight song being played, Campbellsville on the field, Campbellsville in the road, whites. They have those gold helmets, the purple pants, Medkiff County in the home maroons, pretty much top to bottom. Yeah, maroon out here tonight with the maroon helmets. We mentioned no no decal this year. That was a choice made. I kind of like it. It looks very uh, neat, very tight, very organized, smooth. Keegan Williams, number eight, puts it on the tee on the near hash. Medcalf County will kick it away to start this game. Again, the pregame brought to you by Medcalf Trucks. You mentioned earlier we were talking off the air, talking to Brother Steve as well, ball control. That could have been the fourth stock tip. I think that's always our game, though. The ball control here. Keep it out of Campbellsville's hands as much as possible. That said, it doesn't take Campbellsville very long at times to score it as evidence with their first two games. There's a little long side of rolls to the 40. Still in play. Picked up by number eight for Campbellsville. We'll get his name in a minute. He's at the 40. And he's stopped exactly there. He gets about six or seven on the return. And that's where the Eagles will take over. Looks like Levi Nunn made the first contact on there. He got up happy, too, so get Levi. A big tackle on that one, number 81. We're two seconds into this when Campbellville takes over, as you said, on their own 39-yard line. Just getting underway here from Metcalf County High School. I'm going to keep some stats tonight, so if you hear a delay in the play-by-play, -play, you'll know why that is. First and 10 from, let's call it the 39-yard line, Campbellsville trips to the near side. One receiver to the far side, pistol formation. Looking to his left, look a quick toss. Should be Weathers, he's got a lot of room. Might be one play and a score, he's in open field, he's at the 30. He's at the 20. We're trying to chase him down. Mason Estes has an opportunity. Bottled him up and sliding down is DeAndre Weathers at the 13. So quick strike. The ball traveled nowhere downfield, almost a lateral, but uh, Weathers also give him credit. Campbellsville out there blocking well. I was watching, I was watching them in the pregame and you can see a lot of really disciplined blocking from the Eagles 
in the run-throughs. Looks like it translates pretty well to the field. First and 10, Campbellsville at the Midkiff County 13 in the red zone. Immediately, one play. Now the handoff, it's number 33. That's the guy who scores a lot of their touchdowns. He's gonna get another one. He's into the end zone from 13. It's a touchdown, Campbellsville, for Daniel Forbes, the senior. So 11 and 11 to go here. So less than a minute, Campbellsville, two plays, marches it down the field quickly. As I said, we want to keep the ball in our hands, but it doesn't take Campbellsville long often. Well blocked, it was a little trap on the end. The end we got uh, blocked and then Byron Kirkland Lundy came over to try to make the tackle, but he's trying to tackle a 220 pound bag there. PAT is up and away, man. Nice leg there. It's good. I'm trying to see who that is. That's Nathan Contreras, the senior, number 36, and he booted it straight through. 11-11 on the clock. Campbellsville up 7-0. Let's take a 30-second break. You're listening to your home for Hornet Sports, the KY Sports Guys. 99-1 the Hoss. Everybody, a bit of an inauspicious start for your Hornets. 7 0 Campbellsville, a two play, 61 yard drive. Here's what you got to do now. I mentioned last week, I believe in the stock tips, you got to have a short memory. Got to go out here. A lot of these guys were on the defense. Good thing is they couldn't have got too tired out there in that short amount of time, but you can't get dejected either. Keep your head up, go out here, answer that drive by Campbellsville. Putting the toe to it, that is Contreras. It's gonna come down at about the 10. That's Patterson, I believe, who's gonna bring it past the 20. He's bottled up there. He'll make the 22, it'll be first and 10 Hornets. You can just see again on that kickoff, Campbellsville's bringing a lot of guys with a lot of speed. Here, Kate Patterson really didn't have much place to go after his first five yards or so. Campbellsville had a lot of guys down on him. First and 10, Midkiff County, they take over. At their 23-yard line, let's call it. Well, in between the 22 and the 23, what do you want to give them? Let's give Looks them like the, the 20. 23 to me. Why not? Yeah. That's where we'll go. I'll move it forward. It's first and 10. Hornets come out with Mason Estes at quarterback. Andrew Hills in the backfield. Man in motion is Kirkland Lundy. Estes is going to try to keep it. He's tossed for a loss back at the 20-yard line. They'll give him the 21. Snap was high there. Byron, Kirkland and Lundy running that jet sweep. They take the jet sweep option. Mason kept it, but the timing was just off from the get-go because the high snap. It's going to bring up the second 12, as you mentioned. 10.45 to go here in the first quarter. Hornets trail 7-0. Coach David Clemens, new assistant principal up the high school, sends a couple of guys in with the play. Estes has the guys in the huddle. We're starting to get, the sun's going down a little bit. I can feel the heat alleviating just a hair. Do you feel that yeah, way? Yeah, exactly. That's good. One receiver this way. That looks to be Ben Shirley, maybe. That's his handoff, Kirkland Lundy. Trying to get outside. Cannot try the left side, and he'll be stacked up for no gain. Now you just probably going to actually give him about a yard loss there. Um, tried a little inside handoff with a... Sweep left, just couldn't get uh, anything going. Campbellsville right now pursuing the ball, their quickness once again just showing here. 9.50 to go, first quarter. Campbellsville out to the 7 nothing lead. It's going to be third and long, third and 12 for Medkef County. Appreciate everybody out there listening to us. Again, Medkef Drugs sponsored the pregame show. feel like we didn't get to say their name enough, but we appreciate all our sponsors. We've got a good group this year. Large amount of sponsors. There's still time yep. for you if you'd like to sponsor as well. Estes asks for the football. Just a straight pitch. Hills trying the right side. Nothing there. Spins and he'll be stacked up back at the 20-yard line. And so three running plays that don't get anything. In fact, we'll start worse than we began. Yeah, we're about uh, fourth and 13, and it's a long 13. King and Williams is going to come out here as the clock runs. We'll be under nine when he kicks this one. We'll have two Campbellsville receivers back deep. 
you mentioned last week and in the uh, Stock Tony stock tips, you mentioned the special teams. Punting was definitely special. There's a nice end over end punt heading towards the sideline. Takes a huge bounce. Hit at the 45, taking at the 39. There is a return. Campbellsville gets it near the 50, and that's where the Eagles will start their second drive. Those weathers on the return. Looks like number 15, Taylor Thurman, among others, there to make that tackle. Campbellsville will have it here near mid midfield. Excuse me. First and 10 on the, their own 49, 8.44 to go in the first. Campbellsville up 7-0 on a quick two-play drive in the first drive of the game. Coach Tina Hurd is here, and uh, I've never been happier. So <laughs> there you go. Handoff up the middle. Good yardage again. That's number 32, Landon Colvin. He's got big yardage down to the Metcalf County 20. Byron Kirkland Lundy on the tackle, but not before, as you mentioned, big yardage. Byron led, I believe, or was uh, near the lead in tackles both weeks. And when your safeties are making a lot of tackles, you know you've got to get more pursuit from your big guys up front when it gets the second and third level like that. So Byron there saving the touchdown. Gain of 31 on the play, first and 10 at the 20 for Campbellsville. The quarterback, number seven, Case Eastrich. Guy can throw it. He hasn't had to so far, really. Low snap. He's going to keep it. Set up a nice block again, but this time the defense holds. He gets three, maybe to the 17. Tyler Wilbur got the tackle there. He had him down low. It looked like maybe Greg Bledsoe came in to sort of clean it up, but it was uh, definitely Vibbert who, who wrapped up Eastridge. Now, Eastridge can run too. Uh, Vibbert did a good job going low and tackling there. Second and seven football at the 17-yard line in Medcalf County territory, Campbellsville. That's the first time we've had the better of it in this game. They send three wide to the near side, one to the far side. The football on the far hash. Eastridge, number seven in the pistol, fakes the handoff, tosses it out to Weathers on the right side. We had him lined up, but he makes the man miss. He's inside the 10, and he's spun out of bounds inside the five. That was Aiden Harris on the tackle. As you mentioned, you had a, we had a man there. Easier said than done from up here, but he was there, broke down to, to make the tackle, and then, you know, Weathers just, uh, he's tough. Yeah, he's, he's a good player. <laughs> I uh, remember calling his name a lot in basketball as well, but uh, yeah, it's a little different. You coached uh, receivers, I think. Is that right? Back no, we did line, line. You were the line. Yes. Oh, you were the line coach. I don't know why I thought receivers. I just love watching receivers block. Yeah. As a line coach, I got you. See. Well, I'm sorry. I, I botched that, but the point is, man, when you're out there one on one, you're a DB. It's it's a different thing. It really is an island. Snap back. Little jet sweep to the receiver trying to get the edge. He's going to get the edge. He's going to score, I believe. No. Yes. Touchdown for Campbellsville. They get it out to the left side, farthest from us, and make it 13-0. And that was just, again, the play wasn't designed to go that far outside. The Hornets did a good job filling in the gaps. And is that Weathers on that one as well? I, think it was, I thought it was 14, LaDainian okay, Smith. Okay, Smith, excuse me. Smith couldn't cut it up, but he kept stretching it outside and said athleticism paid off, and he, he got it in the corner of the end zone, makes it 13 nothing with 639 going to the first. DeAndre Weathers also doing the holding. Very impressive there. Contreras trying for his second PAT. The kick is away. I don't know if he made it, but he certainly kicks it far enough. He did. 14-0 with 639 to go in the first quarter. Campbellsville has the lead. Let's take a 30-second break. You listen to your home for Hornet Sports and the KY Sports Guys. 99 won the Hawks. Welcome back, everybody. 6.39 to go here in the first. Campbellsville with two impressive drives. Taking a 14-0 lead on the Hornets. Hornets about to receive the ball for their second possession. 6.39 to go in the first quarter. Tough two uh, possessions for Medkiff County so far, but you said it earlier. Just got to keep plugging. 
and, and they'll get your head down, do some positive things. Byron Kirkland Lundy has moved to the left side. Now, they kicked it left last time. I'm sure they're trying to kick it away from Byron, but uh, this time we'll see if we can maybe confuse it. Contreras boots it high, end over end. Taking it to five by Patterson. He dropped it and picked it up. When he picked it up, he was back in the end zone, so they blow it dead. That might have been a break for us. Yeah, it's going to be a touchback, so that helps us out. Uh, just a high school, high school rule being a bit different there than the, the NFL or college rule. He touched it at the five, never had it, muffed it, really. And the football goes all the way to the end zone for a touchback. So. That, that's the kind of break you want to take advantage of, get something positive going here. The Hornets right now, again, the, the Campbellsville linebackers and D-line just doing such a great job going downhill towards the ball in that first possession. Two receivers on the far side. It's Byron Kirkland Lundy by himself nearest us. Man in motion is Zach Purdue. They hand it off to Hills. He is swarmed under back at the 18th. Yeah, so it's going to be another loss. Had Byron Kirkland Lundy over here one-on-one -on -one sort of by himself at the, the call was for the run. So we'll have second and 11 now. 6-15 and counting in this first quarter. You know, people all the time, they say, hey, you need to tell the time and the score more, right? Mm -hmm. So just 6-0-8 and 14-0. <laughs> Hopefully, you tune in on the Hornet News Network. I think they have the score yes. down in the corner. Hey, big thanks to Anita Love, Brody Hurt, uh, Randy Lee also with his work. Uh, just thankful for those folks. Thank you for joining us, whether you're watching it or just listening. A little pitch on a jet sweep of our own. Now trying to cut it back. Maybe a little positive yardage back to the line of scrimmage. I'll have to see who that was. I believe it may have been Kagan Patterson, number 21. How about Zach, Zach Perdue? Perdue? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Just a two, not a two-one. There you go. So they're going to give him a yard, almost two on that one, I think. Put the football just past the 20 yard line. If you hear venerable PA announcer Daniel Bragg a little bit better tonight on the broadcast, it's because we have fixed the sound. And man, it is crisp and loud and solid. Yeah, it's booming right now. I'm not sure how, it's, uh, how it sounds on air, but. Heading to the 505 mark as the Hornets break the huddle. 10 on the play clock, third and nine from their own 21. Hornets in a hole early, down 14 0. Estes asks for the football and he has it. Gives a little fake, pulls it down, gets away from a man, but he won't go very far. Might get the 22, and it'll be fourth down. It's going to be maybe a gain of maybe a yard, but once again, the pursuit. Part of it is, is athleticism. Uh, really, part of it to me is discipline. They're, they're yes. getting where they need to be. And in the past, I'm going back 20-plus years, good Campbellsville teams, when they are good, their defense is very disciplined and, and very organized, and right now they're showing it. Great point. Keegan Williams, second punt. This one spiraling. Taken in at the 47, 48-yard line. Nice punt. Yeah, and Aiden Harrison was right there on that tackle to make it. William Decker also was there, but uh, Harrison got it, almost got there when the ball did. So that was great special teams on the Hornets' uh, part and get it past the 50 into Campbell's little territory. So good kick from Keegan. A 30-yard punt, no return. Very reasonable, and as you said, good uh, coverage. Number six, Gabriel Noyola. If you're listening or watching and you're a Campbellsville fan, took that punt safely. Campbellsville now comes to the line. They've scored on their first two possessions, and they've done it with relative ease. They send trips to the far side. Weathers out here by himself, pistol formation. And now it's Eastridge, gives a pump, and he lets it fly. He's got a man down there. Pretty good coverage. It's intercepted. Zach Purdue picks it off. At the 15-yard line. That's an excellent play by Zach Purdue. The coverage. Thought he uh, was beaten, but made up the space. Ball just a tad underthrown. But it was one-on-one. On one. Receiver versus DB. The cornerback, Purdue, goes up high points and pulls it down like he was the receiver. Could be the thing the Hornets need to get him kick-started here with 4 or 9 to go in the first. What a great play. Can't say enough about it. You talk about uh, in the in the Stock Tony Stock Tips about how they would go over the top, and we were going to have to be aware. That time we didn't bite. They gave a little pump fake. 
Great coverage, and then an even better play to get up in the air, high point it, and get the pick. Hornets take over to 15. See what happens next. We've got two guys in the backfield. That's just trying to get rid of it. Cannot. He slung down at the 13. We'll call it a sack. I think they were trying to fake uh, the handoff and then throw a little quick slant. The lineman got in the way. Braden Neal uh, looked like he was blocking two guys. Blocked them all the way back into uh, to the back judge, it looked like. I mean, that, that didn't help Mason any, but it looked like uh, that Braden did have a, a nice block with, with two guys in the back judge. Had to, uh, had to use some evasive tactics. And so a loss of one on the play will make it second and 11. They put the football down at the 14. Three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Hornets, after that big interception, have the football back, but they trail at 14-0. Thanks for listening tonight on 99-1 The Hawks and also on the Hornet News Network. Estes has Hills in the backfield with him. Fakes the handoff. He gets out to the right side looking for some space. Nice little step in. You talk about discipline, though. This is a, a big, strong team, no doubt about that. But they're well coached, and they're right where they need to be. I like the little move Mason made, but there was just another eagle right there. That's a great point you're making. Mason gets outside often against uh, a lesser defense or a less disciplined team. He kicks that one out, a little, little fake in, and he's gone. That time, two eagles were there to bring him down, and... Uh, it's not just about speed, it's both. Give Mason Yard football back at the original line of scrimmage. It's third and 10 for the Hornets. Patterson brings in the play, tells Mason Estes, here's what we need. There's 10 on the play clock, so we're gonna have to hustle or we're gonna have to take a timeout. We are, I think, wanting to get that play clock down, but we're at two and one. We're not gonna get this one Oh Yeah, we did. Amazing, we got set. And now throwing it deep, it's got a man incomplete. Had Ben Shirley down at the 50-yard line, maybe a little bit behind him. And it falls to the turf. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, that would Ben had to turn around, and it was just a little, little beneath him. It was going to be a tough catch. I'm sure he, he would like to have had it. Not a bad throw, by the way. No, I'm not sure. I think everyone was set, but but Byron and maybe he was running parallel. Almost okay. like he was in motion. That's all I'm, I can figure here. It was very close. 2.18 to go in the first quarter. Found that one away. They might go back to that because Ben got behind his man. Keegan Williams takes a high snap and gets it away. Another nice punt. Lands at the 45. Takes a good bounce and out of bounds. It'll be first and 10 Campbellsville in Midcalf County Territory. Yeah, let's keep it right here. Talk about all of our season sponsors. I want to take Mia Pueblo, Miller Family Dentistry, SCRTC, Ambity State Bank, Butler Funeral Home, Mayor Doug Smith and City Council, Kingsford Manufacturing, Last Thompson Insurance, Studel Financial, MC Shirt Shop, Old School Cafe, Edmonton Hometown Jewelers, Brookshire Construction, 3 Sloan, uh, Kentucky Farm Bureau, South Central Bank, Shannon Fields, Metcalf County Clerk, MK Shop Mormon Box Office Videos, The Printing Press, and Metcalf Drugs. We're going to have a timeout. Coach LJ is going to call it, I believe, 2.10 to go in the first quarter. Campbellsville had just gotten onto the field. And with that, let's take a 30 second break. You're listening home for Hornet Sports. The KY Sports Guys 99 won the Hawks. Welcome back, everybody. 2-10 to go in the first quarter. Campbellsville has it first and 10 at the Metcalf County 45. Last time they tried to throw it over the top. Zach Purdue with a big play. The interception got the Hornets the ball back, but uh, unable to move it. And so another punt, I believe three punts on the night so far for Keegan Williams. Campbellsville in the pistol with two backs, one to either side. They hand it off to number 32. That's Landon Colvin. And he doesn't get a lot. He's going to get two or three maybe. Good defense by the Hornets. Looks like Tyler Vibbert first in contact there. Big man on the inside. We've called his name quite a few times tonight. He's doing a good job plugging those holes on the middle. It's, it's making it a little tougher here in these last couple of drives for Campbellsville to run up the middle. Football at the 43, a gain of two, make it second and eight. Oh! 
You know, this is a game you always want to win. But this is a game that doesn't have any impact on district play. If we can find some little things to get us going right now, 14-0, plenty of time. Just need a few positive plays. That last defensive snap was a good one. Yes. Empty backfield now with Pistol. Three wides near his side. Two the other way. Eastridge, he wants to toss it. He's got plenty of time. Now he may just have to pull it down and run. He gets rid of it, but he's beyond the line of scrimmage. We might have picked it again. I think we did. Another pick. This time it's number five, Aiden Harrison. All right, Eastridge. Throwing that one, as you mentioned, I'm pretty sure he was past the line. That would have uh, no flag, though, so that was a great job by Aiden. And you got to go back. That wasn't the design of that play, so you got to get the Hornets secondary all together. Kudos for that coverage. Eastridge wanted to go deep with that, but he just didn't see anything to do. So he had to tuck it down, then last second decides to throw it. And uh, Aiden right there. Two consecutive plays where the Hornet defense up to the task two times that our coverage has been excellent. First and 10, our best field position of the night at the 27. Estes takes a high snap, has a little bit of room at the 30, and the 35, and the 40, and the 45. It'll be the first, first down of the night. Yes, the first out, Silver Bank first down, well blocked out. I don't know if you saw the pancake idea, but the pitcher Braden Neal earlier blocking two guys. That time, he just obliterated somebody, put him right on the ground for a flatjack. Braden Neal getting it done on the offensive line, opens up the hole, Mason Estes. Carries it for a gain of 19 yards to the 46. It was well done at the point of attack. He had a double-team block. Mason gets in that hole, as I mentioned, Braden kicking his man out and then down. 45 seconds left in the first quarter. Campbellsville kind of knocked us in the mouth a little bit. 14-0 is your score. But now the Hornets have regained their footing and they look to be up for the battle here. Exciting. First and 10 at the 46. Estes has for the football. High snap. Hands it off to Hills. Again, it's just kind of out of sorts there. Hills will lose a yard, maybe two. Yeah, the high snap, it's, we, we've seen a few of those. It's, it's been a bit of a problem. Football is such a game of teamwork. It's also such a game of timing. And everything sort of at that uh, level where, you, where everything's almost like a clock, you know, the running. Speaking of the clock, it's going to run out here in this first quarter. But the Hornets trailing 14 to nothing, but moving the ball for the first time tonight. Let's take a 30-second break. We'll be back with some stats. Here in your home for the Hornets and the KY Sports guys, 991, the Hawks. Welcome back, everybody. It's October along with Coach Shea Hurt, Coach Dina Hurt on stats through one. The Hornets trail 14 to nothing. Moving the ball, though, here on their fourth possession. Get some quick stats. So far, Mason Estes, 18, uh, excuse me, 18 yards rushing. Zach Purdue with two yards rushing. Passing Mason is 0 for 1. Kicking. Kiki Williams has had three punts for an average of 34 yards on defense. Tyler Bibbert leading the team in tackles. First and, I'm sorry, second and 11. Hornets at the 45. Estes going to try to keep it again. A little bit of room. And he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe give him another yard. And so let's make it third and nine. There's a bit of hesitation there on the block, and I'm not sure if, if Campbellsville's initial surge sort of pushed the line back or what. But the, but the pull was, uh, was a little bit slow coming, and then nothing there. Mason loses his helmet, so he's going to have to take a, take a play off. Ezzy Cavins going to see his first action at quarterback of the year sitting in the play with him. Getting some out-of-town scores. Glasgow and Monroe playing in uh, what I think is a, a classic rivalry. Glasgow up 7-0 early. And now in Hart County with the 7-0 lead. I'm not sure who they're playing, but we'll look that up as well. Right here, it's 14-0 and it's 13. I believe Hart's playing green tonight. There you go. Appreciate that. 11-10 on the clock as it runs. The snap is back. Estes is buried. That one came out short like it kind of hit somebody. 
I'm sorry, yeah, that's Izzy Cap. Yeah, I believe uh, maybe he got you snapped in that, and I, I totally forgot. Maybe got snapped and uh, <laughs> maybe slipped. Maybe the ball right. getting wet out there with the sweat. But, uh, just having some trouble right now with that center quarterback exchange, and that is – that's making it rough, and this promising right drive now ends with a couple of bad snaps and, and some uh, Campbellsville penetration. It's going to be fourth and 16 as Keegan Williams is out. Football at the 40-yard line. Two back for Campbellsville. Williams boots it away down the right side. A spiraling kick that lands inbounds. That's a dandy, and it angles near the 20-yard line. Keegan Williams getting it done. Yeah, right now, Keegan, four punts. He was averaging, I said, over 35 yards, and that one, another beaut. Not only long, but directionally kept it out of the hands of, of DeAndre, DeAndre, DeAndre Weathers, excuse me. It was a beauty, Clark. And don't forget DeAndre Weathers' brother, Keandre Weathers. Uh, don't want to get those two confused. Right now, it's first and ten. Campbellsville up 14-0, 10-25 to go in the second quarter. Yeah, we called their names a lot in basketball season for sure. Campbellsville send trips to the far side. Weathers is one of them in the slot, I believe. Yeah, watch the uh, little bubble screen to Weathers here. And so Eastridge asked for the football. Handoff instead, getting to the outside. Let's see how it goes. Nice tackle by Mason Estes as number 33, Daniel Forbes, gets short yardage. That's why he tackled a big guy there Mason Estes, number, number seven. That's a senior making a tackle right there. So they ran that one, but you're going to see the bubble screen to Weathers, the inner, inner, most innermost, uh, excuse me, the innermost receiver. You'll see that quite a bit tonight, I, I would think, from Campbellsville. We're hit the 959 mark. Under 10 minutes in the second quarter. Some more out-of-town scores on the out-of-town scoreboard sponsored by the KYSportsGuys.com, which we don't know if it's operational or not. But Warren East up 6-0, Franklin Simpson up 6-0. Glasgow's lead 14-0 now at the end of one over Monroe County. Second and eight, let's call it, from the 22. Man in motion, Campbellsville. Eastridge, he's just going to keep it. He's a good runner, and he's going to have a first down and more. He gets close to the 34. It'll be first down, Campbellsville. Tackle by uh, Cole DeVore held him up. Byron Kirkland Lund, he came and finished him off, it looked like. Christopher White along with number 80, Byron Kirkland Lund. Nine and a half to go, second quarter. Campbellsville struck first. They struck quickly. They struck again. 14 0 the score, but the Hornet defense has looked much better these last two, three possessions. First and 10, Campbellsville at their own 34. Eastridge, the quarterback. Looks like he has Forbes to his left. That's a man in motion. It's DeAndre Weathers. He's in the backfield. He just pauses and looks, and then he gets away. He's out to the right side. He's turned a 10-yard loss into a gain, but there's a hanky on the field. A couple things. Mason Essence again loses his helmet, so he's going to have to come out of once again, though, sure if there's a snap issue or what. Mason's there. He forces it back, and then that time, I think, uh, must be a block in the back. Got a personal foul. Head to head, maybe. Some sort of targeting on their uh, blindside block, perhaps. They're really trying to get those out of the game if they can. I didn't see anything malicious. That pin would be from the line of scrimmage. So they'll uh, mark it off 15. Don't want to take up for anybody making an illegal block maliciously. I don't think anybody was, as you say. Right. It's easy when it cuts back across the field to want to get in there and block sure. somebody. It's easy to, to not get your hands out and do the block in the correct way. What about Byron Kirkland? He's not going to get credit for that tackle now, but he, he kind of came out of nowhere. He's maybe the last line of defense had that play stood. They mark it from the spot of the foul, and so they don't mark it very far back from the original line of scrimmage. It's first and 15 at the 29, and now the whistle blows. Because yeah. I don't think that's right. That should be marked well back if it's a 15-yard penalty. Because he was way back in the backfield when all that was happening. Is that young Tyler? It is, yeah, to say, hey, I'm not sure about this. In the meantime, I do want to tell you how hot it is up here in the booth. I've got some peanut M&Ms. I hope you don't <laughs> hear me trying to eat them. And you know what they say about M&Ms, right? They melt oh, yeah. your mouth, not in your hand. Well, these, it's so hot up here, and I kept these in the fridge because I like I like mine chilled. Yeah, I we love talked about chilled that on candies. the show. And the outer color layer is coming off on my hands. You, so uh, now I have orange hands. 
the yellow, and yellow. I'm doing whatever and yellow, yellow and uh, you'll be looking like a Smurf soon. <laughs> probably will. Okay, so young Tyler and the crew uh, also saw Arlen Mink out there. We got a lot of folks out there that we know, and uh, we're glad to have them. Man, we need officials. If you're interested in officiating, I promise you, I will not yell at you. Uh, I will, I will not criticize you on the air if I can help it. Yep. But we need officials. Football all the way back to the 20 now. It's first and 24. So good job there getting it right. After the crack back block. Under center, Eastridge fakes the handoff roll to his right. Fires a bullet. He has a man. Nobody near him. But fortunately for us, he steps out of bounds. A couple of yards shy of the original line of scrimmage. It'll be second and 12 from the 32. That was Tashawn Hart. Campbellsville bringing multiple weapons. And that time just stepped out on his own. Had a lot of space. Tashawn Hart. It's hard to cover all those fast receivers, and obviously your, your first thought is DeAndre Weathers, so you, you get him covered, and then there's other guys that can come in there and, and uh, make you pay. Second and 12 from the 32, 8.34 to go in the second quarter, 14-0. Campbellsville has the lead in the football. A penalty set Campbellsville back, and now they try to run somebody out onto the field. You can't do that, so we're going to get a whistle on a timeout. With that, we'll take a 30-second break. You list your home. For Hornet Sports and the KY Sports Guys, 99 won the homes. Almost uh, a third of the way through this first, or excuse me, the second quarter. Football on the far hash, and we are ready to begin after that Campbellsville timeout, their first of the night. Twins in each direction. Pistol formation, Easters looks to his left. Pocket collapses, and he steps up, gets rid of it. He's got a completion and a first down. That's number 33, Daniel Forbes. Yeah, it looked like uh, William Decker on the tackle, but not before the first down. Look, right now, the difference in la one of the big differences in last year and this year, and and we've seen it. Obviously, we lost a lot of guys. We've mentioned, but Easter didn't have that kind of time last year. He had his. He looked down, checked all his guys downfield, then checked down to his back. His fifth option. Trips to the near side, first and ten, Campbellsville at the 44. Eastridge hands the ball off, straight up the gut. Forbus again, he's chopped down at the 50. Decker again on the tackle, going low. Giving up a lot of weights, so he got to go over those legs. But uh, another good hole created by the Campbellsville O-line and a well-run play by Forbus. Gain about six on the play. Six yard gain, yeah. yeah. Brings up second, four, thir three, excuse me, seven thirty-five to go in the second. Campbellsville to the line. Eastridge, a little quarterback draw. He has a first down to Moore. He's in open field. This is trouble as a man slips and falls. Eastridge will score. Campbellsville touchdown, making 20 to nothing. 7-17 to go in the second. Well blocked in all facets on the line. You saw some good blocking. Then down the field, Mason Essis comes up and uh, just well blocked there. And then Eastridge, big guy, big arm. He showed the speed right there when he got free. 20 to nothing. Uh, the defense had really kind of held its own the last two. A couple of picks. Uh, stopping the run game a little bit, but that time Eastridge gets loose and he's able to get into the end zone. PAT coming up by Contreras, number 36. That's Nathan Contreras. He's a senior. And that one is up and drills it through. That might have hit the uh, snow cone station back there. What is that called? It's not called snow cones. Uh, like shaved ice. Shaved ice. Thank you. 7.17 to go in the second quarter. 21 nothing. Campbellsville has the lead. Let's take a 30-second break. Let's show home. For Hornet Sports, the KY Sports Guys, 99 won the Hawks.
Welcome back, everybody. 21-0 your score, 7-17 to go in the second quarter. Campbellsville has the lead. And you know, they came in, they uh, they beat Owen County, I believe. They were 54 to nothing. Is that right? 50 something to nothing. And then last week they beat Casey County 34 to 6. 35 to 6, yeah. Thank you. So 54 and 35, quick math because uh, both English majors here, we can do it. Maybe Mr. Eaton, uh, Dina would figure it out real quick. I've got 89, 89 points. 89 points to 6 coming in. And tonight, continuing that trend, Contreras boots it. This is a low kickoff. Hits the hands of Patterson. He picks it up at the two. This is trouble. Yes, it is. He's not past the five yet, but he does get outside. Had a little bit of space, and he turns he something out of nothing. He makes something out of nothing James and gets Patterson. to, I don't know, about the 13. Yeah, that was tough now. I see a, a Hornet and maybe Patterson rolling around over yeah, there. So time, he's up now. Just a little, Hope he's a little okay. bit of a limp. Now, he's, he is the backup running back here tonight. He's fourth string running back, but yep. we are down two. Our top two running backs are two of the top three running backs. Andrew Hills is starting the backfield, but Kagan Patterson is our number two running back. So he's he's running off the field. He seems okay. Yeah, C.T. Branstetter, as you mentioned, is out, as well as uh, Connor Neal, I believe, is also out. So. Jaden Smith on defense as well. Yeah, so we're, we're missing some guys. Uh, that we need to have on there uh, on the field eventually. But, hey, next person up. You know, that's how it works. You used to talk about it all the time. You can't control that. You got to control what you can't control. Mason Estes hustles onto the field. 7-0-8 to go in the second quarter. Only down three scores. That's not uh, Abraham Lincoln score. It's 21. <laughs> it's kind of two score. You went that one. Two receivers to the near side. Estes, straight keeper. Tries the left side. Gets out of there and finds some room. He actually spins forward near the 20. Yeah, that was a pretty nice gain, and it was hard to see from up here what exactly was going on. Macy gets in the middle of the pack, and then I see him kind of being uh, slunk around and then sort of does the Benny Snell thing, falls forward. For a gain, as you mentioned, about six as we hit the 645 mark of the second quarter. I don't know what a score is. Is it more than a peck? It's 10. Oh. Right, or 20. It's 20. Oh, is it more, than a, is it 20. more, than, more than a bushel? It's more than a bushel. Yeah, it's 20. Is it a hectare? Four score and seven years ago. Three, three score and 10 is supposed to be the length of, of your life on average. A score is 20. I knew that. A little pitch. Kirkland Lundy finds a hole. He's in the open field. He's at the 40. One man trying to catch him. He will. Kirkwood Lundy, Iron is tripped up at the Campbellsville 30. That was exciting. Yeah, it was a big South Central Bank first down on the run. By Would Byers you call that a run or a pass? Was that the little Utah? Or? I believe it pitched it forward. Let's go Utah pass. So we're going to say a pass from Estes to Byron Kirkland Lundy. They mark him at the 31, and man, he was motoring down through there. Get it well blocked out for sure, I believe. Um, Corvus made the tackle, showing the speed from that big runner, but uh, Byron turned it on the Jets. I think he did. He showed some speed. Corvus did, but I think there was more angle yep. than anything else. Man, Byron just a shoelace away from putting six on the board, and Camelsville calls a timeout. 5.43 to go here in the second quarter. It's 21-0, but Metcalf County now on the move. So let's take a 30-second break. You're listening over on Hornet Sports, the KY Sports guys. 99 won the Hoss. back everybody and so a burst right there uh, you'll want to go back and watch that again and again on YouTube on the Hornet News Network nice uh, little play good blocking well executed and Byron Kirkland Lundy showed some tremendous speed to pick up what let's go 61 yards it was a, it was a bunch it, it was a score almost I think 
literally say, and figuratively. Let's say 60. Estes is going to keep this, and he is thrown backwards. He'll get nothing. And like it. <laughs> that was, uh, was Keandre Weathers, <laughs> I believe, who was doing the sling in there. Um, that was the uh, backside the backside lineman coming in and making that play. It was blocked well out front. Just couldn't get the guy on the, on the backside, and he came in and made it. Kind of sent the back, uh, backside guy on a run blitz. You know, 60% of the time that works every time. So able to get Campbellsville a nice stop there. Second and 10 from the 31. 5-10 to go here in this first half. Stay tuned. We'll have the Old School Cafe Halftime Show. We'll interview new high school principal, Joseph Veet. Looking forward to that. Man, great first week of school, by the way. All the way around. Every building, transportation, all of it. Estes had a little hole that time. He kind of tripped over his own man. His helmet goes flying again. Surely that's not Mason's helmet again. We've got to get that yep. man a new helmet. That's three helmet losses by Mason. Uh, that means uh, the official saw it. He'll be coming out, and here he comes. Uh, not sure what's going on with the helmet situation. Not sure that I wouldn't. And Coach LJ has done this before. He might take the time out to keep him. Or they're just going to run Ezzy out there. Ezzy got some good minutes last year. Has some experience. Ezzy has experience. Ezzy has an arm. If you can get him some time and get somebody open, he can find the man. Uh, not quite the runner that Mason is, and you lose that aspect of things. You're going to have to hurry. We're at seven seconds on the play clock. Yep, might need a timeout. Let's see. Coach LJ running that way, and it is. Thought it might be. Timeout. Metcalf County, County calls their second and a half. 4.08 to go in the second quarter. 21-0 Campbellsville has the lead. Let's take a 30-second break. You're listening on for Hornet Sports. The KY Sports guys. 99-1 the Hoss. Coach Hurd, along with the main man, the Stock Tony, Coach Dina Hurd, also up here keeping the stats. We appreciate it very much. And remember, as the Stock Tony already said at halftime, we have new head principal to high school, Joseph Eaton, joining us for the halftime show. Is he still out there, by the way? And Campbellsville tried to blitz, missed time in that one, unless they were, nope, were going to say there was some movement. Yeah, Keegan took off. He's, that I might have been going to Keegan. He looked like he was heading down the field. Uh, I, I was looking at the guy over here, the uh, left outside linebacker. He was coming hard. So definitely, I think they had that called up either way. Big cheer from the uh, cheering section. Maybe Ezzie's they know this is going to be a big strike right here. Well, they got to get Mason's helmet fixed. My goodness, He's that's wearing it right now. And so Ezzy in the pistol. Byron, Kirkland Lundy, nearest to us by himself. Handoff up the middle. Hills has a little bit of room. Gets that yardage back. They lost on the penalty. It'll be fourth down from the 30. Yeah, I don't believe you're going to try a uh, 45, 47 love to yard see it, field though. goal. I think he can do it. So I think he can do it. <laughs> that, would be, that would be a long one for sure. Mason's going to come back out. A it's going to be 40, about and nine. A 48 yarder is what it'd be. Come on, man. Fourth down and nine. Fourth down and ten, maybe. Ball between the 31 and the 30 in Campbellsville territory. This has been the best drive of the night by far. It's fourth down here. Let's see if we can sustain it. Trips to the far side. Estes fakes the handoff. Quick throw. Can't get it to... Byron, they got back there so quickly. Lucky to get it away, but that's a turnover on Dan. Yeah, right there again. The idea was there. Uh, as I said, the stock tips get the ball in his hands is always a good idea. It's hard to do when you got about a second to throw it. That right, Campbell's little just brought everybody. They they kind of saw that one coming, and I guess as you said, lucky there wasn't a sack or maybe a, a fumble on that when he had so many people on. First and 10, Campbellsville at their own 31-yard line. 3.17 to go in the half. 21-0, Campbellsville has the advantage. They send twins. 
either direction. Running back to the right of Eastridge. Now they put a man in motion. Motion rather near side to far. Eastridge rolls to his right. Throws a bullet. He's got his man hit hard, but it's a nice game. Completion good to number eight. That's Cox, number eight. Mason Estes with the tackle, but was that Weathers? I had it eight. It looked like 11 to me. Okay, it's so I apologize. DeAndre Weathers then we're going to give the reception. You can How see the arm. You can see the 11 and 8, by the way. <laughs> you can. How do you mess up 11 and 8? Hit the button, somebody. This time, Weathers a little too high and behind him. Incomplete. It'll be second down. The football to 45, by the way. 2.53 to go in the half. The answer is try to make one of the most difficult throws in football. Running left, throwing back across your body. That time, I just said, just not a, not a perfect pass. Weathers uh, probably catches some of those. Just couldn't pull that one in. Going to bring up second 10. We're at 2.53 to go. The Hornets right now will get the ball back to start the second half. You'd like to see them hold here, keep this lead to 21. Great point that you make. I always like to think through those things. It's very important. Get yourself right back in this thing. You need a stop here, second and 10 at the 45. Again, twins either way. Eastridge rolls to his right. Fires it. Might be complete. Looks like we almost got a, a paw on it. It is complete. Pass there was complete. To yeah. I believe they're calling them dots right now. If you watch Hard Knocks, that was a dot. From so what? Explain further. What's a what's a dot? It's just a, like a baseball pitch, you know, that you barely see, you. like a okay. seed. Thank it's you so much. Yeah. First down at the Medcalf County 44, gain of 11 on that last throw to number 10, Tayshawn Hart. Eastridge across the middle again on a slant, has his man. This is number six, and he is gone. That's going to be a touchdown. Gabriel Noyola, 2.22 on the clock in the second. It's 27-0. Again, you get right there in the middle of that zone. Noyola sits down, gets it, and then does the rest with some nice blocking it. At uh, the point where there were about four Hornets there, he slipped through a couple, a couple got blocked. And I know Campbellsville just showing some offensive prowess here tonight in this first half. PAT coming up, fourth attempt of the night. Again, it's number 11, DeAndre Weathers, who holds number 36, Nathan Contreras, the kicker. High snap, but they get it down. The PAT is good. 2.22 to go in the second quarter. 28-0, Campbellsville has the lead. Let's take a 30-second break. You listen to your home for Hornet Sports and the KY Sports Guys, 99-1 the Hawks. Friday, 2.22 to go in the second quarter. Campbellsville, uh, you can see this is a high-quality football team. They're going to have a lot of success in their district, probably in their region, probably in the state. Uh, you're not going to run across a uh, better-looking squad than this. And uh, right now, the Hornets a little short-handed. A few key guys out. No excuses. Yeah. And a 118 to boot. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, but they're... Uh, Super talented, uh, the quarterback, the receivers, uh, the guys up front really making hay. So you got to tip your hat there. Let's see with 2.22 to go if the Hornets can get something going here. A little bit of a squibber. Patterson's going to take it in at the 17. Looking for room, can't find it. He snowed under at about the 19. So with 2.15 to go here in this first half, Hornets will take it over on their own 19, down 28 to nothing. Talked earlier, it was a hot one now. The sun's gone, the lights are on, it's uh, dark. That's a pretty night, beautiful night for football. Still a little sticky. It's a little sticky. I was going to say it's, it's cooled off. You obviously don't have the sun, but uh, I still have a little, you know, sweat on the brow. <laughs> Hornets come to the line. Mason Estes back in at the quarterback spot. Hills, number 23, behind him. Kirkland Lundy out nearest the Hornets sideline by himself. Handoff to Hills. Has a little bit of space. 
might get it to the 20. A nice little hole opened up. And then you see Campbellsville's linebacking core, which is a really strong linebacking core, come up and, and make that tackle surely. Uh, right now we've, we've done – Everybody sort of knows our MO is going to be run right now. We're on trying to run it up, so they're, they're sort of stacking and, and uh, blitzing and being there to catch that. So open it up a little bit if we can get back, get some time to throw it, and get it downfield. Clock under two minutes here. Again, stay with us. The halftime show coming up brought to you by the Old School Cafe. All right. Doing some great work up there. and Good stuff for kids up there as well. Second and nine. Estes asks for the football. He has it. Looks to his right. Fires it out there. Not a bad throw through the hands of Byron Kirkland London. Yeah, so idea. Get it to get it to 80. I like it. It just could not make the connection. It's going to break third and nine with 140 to go here. The clock has stopped. Campbellsville with one timeout left. So if they get the ball back, that quick strike offense, you, you do have to worry. It fascinates me, the ebb and flow of this series. We played Campbellsville for a long time uh, when we started. Uh, man, it was they clocked us quick. Last year, I feel like, did we put a clock on them? I know we, we beat them pretty good. Beat them, beat them well. And this year, kind of a reversal of fortunes. The snap never got back to Estes. He picks it up, almost a fumble, Ruski. And then he's driven forward to the 23, maybe the 24. Yeah, again, that's that's four or five snap issues. The exchange just not there. It's going to be interesting to see if Campbellsville calls a timeout. They're actually going to do that here to try to save some time. They like to get a score here before this half. And what is it? It's 36, right? That's the magic number. 28-0 right now is your score. Football is a 24-yard line, fourth down. And about five to go for Medcalf County, 123 on the clock. It is a timeout for Campbellsville. Let's keep it right here. Yeah, I want to thank all of our season sponsors. Once again, Mia Pueblo Mexican Restaurant, Miller Family Dentistry, SCRTC, Edmonton State Bank, Butler Funeral Home, Mayor Doug Smith and City Council, Kingsford Manufacturing, Glass Thompson Insurance, Stoodle Financial, MC Shirt Shop, The Old School Cafe, Edmonton Hometown Jewelers, Brookshire Construction, Torina Sloan, Kentucky Farm Bureau, South Central Bank, Shannon Fields, Metcalf Court Clerk, MK Shotmore Box Office Videos, The Printing Press, and Metcalf Drugs. Once again, we'll have the Old School Cafe Halftime Show coming up in one, two, three. Did you ever watch, uh, it's not one, two, it was three, two, one, contact? I re recall that a bit. KT, yes. PBS. Yeah. Keegan Williams in punt formation, stands at about his 11. Good snap back. Puts the toe to it. This one end over end. Lands at the 48. Takes a huge hornet bounce inside the 40. And is going to be touched at the 35. Great punt by Keegan Williams. Aiden Harrison had an interception tonight. He's also had two really nice special teams plays. First, making a tackle. He's getting down to the ball very quickly from that gunner position. Speaking of, Gen Z Gunner letting us know he's listening in and watching from Cincinnati tonight. <laughs> Uh, shout out to you, Gunner. Keep doing that good work, uh, photographing the Reds in their push for the playoffs. They're trying to get there right now. Double header with the Cubs. The uh, the first one didn't go the Reds' way, and right now, I won't I won't spoil it if you're going to watch it later. One thirteen to go in the half. Campbellsville Eastrich steps back, pulls the football down. Still looking. Now he's going to run it. Breaks a tackle or two. He's going to have a first down, I think. At the 46, one minute mark. Byron Kirkland Lunny in there on that tackle, but not before the first down, and that's important because Campbellsville with no timeouts, actually showing that with one. I'm not sure. I think they do have one timeout left, but uh, that stops the clock, gives them a little time to set up. It's uh, it's running now, so we're 55 seconds. They now have the chain set. The football to 46. We're trying to run Jackson Daughtry off the field. Eastridge bobbled the snap as it rolls to his left now. Tosses it right in the middle of the field as his man. It's first down, and we're going to have an injury here as two Hornets hit each other. It's going to be first down at the 33. Mason Estes is going to – he credit for the tackle. Kagan Patterson got hit by his own man, as you mentioned, in the stomach. So uh, could be maybe one of those uh, knock of the wind out of your situations. That's also going to give Campbellsville the free time out here. 38.3 seconds left. The important thing now is uh, veteran coach Larry Harbson out to check on – Patterson, hopefully he's going to be all right. Kagan Patterson, a sophomore. 
And so we're checking in to, to see what's what's going on there. Let's take a 30-second break. You're listening home for Hornet Sports, the KY Sports Guys, 99 won the Hoss. Now uh, Kagan is being helped off, Samantha Perry out there, and Coach Larry out there as well. He's in some pain, but he's walking off on his own uh, a bit. So that's good news. I do think he probably got the wind knocked out of him pretty good. Campbellsville, they're ready to roll. Fired out to the left side. It's caught if they can keep him in bounds. That's good, but he gets another first down, so the clock stops with 27.6 left. Yeah, interesting. He chose not to go out of bounds. Byron Kirkland gets the tackle, but not before. Chains move. Lock runs. Campbellsville in the hurry up offense. Eastridge spikes it, so 22.6 left, second and 10 from the Metcalf County 22 yard line. So you take right now, if you're them, and then you've still got the one timeout, you take a couple of shots to the end zone, maybe. Uh, if you're the Hornets. Keep it, keep it in front of you if you can at all. Keep them in bounds, as you mentioned. Force them to use that last timeout if they want it. They've already had to use it down here, spiking the ball. We'll keep it right here. Campbellsville on the field. The Hornet defense out there as well. Campbellsville, by the way, if you're not watching on Hornet News Network, they're moving right to left on your radio dial. If you had it pictured the other way, I apologize for ruining <laughs> that image. Second down and 10 from the 22. Bobbled snap. Eastridge has it, though. Now he's being chased. Goes out to the right side. He's past the line of scrimmage, so he's going to tuck it and run. He gets a first down to the 10. Took 12 lot, seconds left. Excuse me, took a lot of time there. That may be, uh, may be a problem for uh, Campbellsville as the clock begins running. Maybe the last play, though. They spike it. I'm, I'm intrigued. They had a timeout, I thought. I'm not, I'm not sure. They were showing one timeout before, and then when they took the timeout, they did take it. Maybe they really have zero. It could be. But the point is, they spike it at second down. The down doesn't matter. Six seconds left. you got at least... One more play, maybe two, if you're Campbellsville. They're trying to get another touchdown on the board. Yeah, you know you got to get a field goal kicker who could probably make this one. But right now, Campbellsville's main goal is to try to get a uh, touchdown and score two and get the clock running in the second half. The Eagles come to the line. They send trips to the near side. Empty backfield, two to the far side. Watch the bubble here. Looks like weather's in the slot. They just run him right over the middle, and he's got it. That's going to be a touchdown, Campbellsville. Just a straight slant, basically. Yeah. And that gets Campbellsville to 34 with 1.1 seconds on the clock. And we may not see that bubble now. I don't know if uh, Weathers will play a lot. Nace Nessus is down on the field. Uh, again, Sands Helmet. But it uh, looks to be maybe, uh, maybe he got hit. Checking on Mason out there. 1.1 seconds left in the half. It's 34-0. Campbellsville has the lead. Looks like the coach and staff, the trainers, are going to hustle out to check on Mason. And so, again, let's take a 30-second break. You're listening on for Hornet Sports and the KY Sports Guys. 99 won the Hoss. Welcome back, everybody. Mason Estes is up. He's still on the field, but he's walking off slowly. Again, the last two injuries, glad to see him walking off. Yeah, Kagan batters are still being tended to over here. Sam 
getting her workout in tonight. I'm going to run over there and check out Mason. Mason is walking a lot better. He's actually even semi-jogging off the field. Now Campbellsville, big for them going for two here. This would put the clock running the entire second half if they can score this. Would that take us to halftime or do you have to kick it off? I think I'd have to kick it. No, no time runs. Backs to either side of Eastridge. They pitch it to a man in motion, and he is going to walk into the end zone. That is Weathers again. I tell you, you called in the pregame. That guy's special. 36 O's to score, 1.1 seconds left in the half. Campbellsville has the uh, big lead. Stay with us at halftime. We've got uh, Principal Joseph Eaton coming up. He's going to talk about all the good things going on uh, up on the hill at the high school. And again, uh, out and about. First big week of school, students in. Now we get a three-day weekend with Labor Day. But, uh, man, people were working. I was really pleased with, with how the kids, the students, the staff, uh, all of our parents and community members uh, thought everything went really smoothly this week. And I can't wait to hear from Mr. Eaton on all the good things that he saw in his first week. As the head principal, of course, spent uh, uh, a year or two as yeah. assistant principal. Yeah, you get a bird's eye view of it all. You get to go to all the different schools. You see it all from a sort of a 30,000 feet, is that what they call That's it? it. But uh, I'm all in, in my little box and then out in the hall, you know, and I've seen some of so it's really been a, been a positive first week from, from my point of view. When I told some folks, as I said, there's a palpable, you can feel it, enthusiasm uh, in every building. Now, we got to sustain that. Uh, but I feel real good about how things are going so far. Campbellsville is going to kick it off, and if we bring it back at all, that'll end the half. Maybe we'll bring it back the whole way. A little squibber, and it rolls right by the two men back there, and then we fall on it. They're going to say that's enough anyway. So Falling on it with Zach Purdue. We're going to hit the halftime at half. It's Campbellsville 36, Metcalf County nothing. Again, stay with us. The Halftime Show brought to you by Old School Cafe. We'll have that coming up after this two-minute break. You're listening to your home for Hornet Sports, the KY Sports Guys, 99.1 The Hawks. Welcome back, everybody. It's Dr. Tony here, Coach Jay Hurt, Coach Dean Hurt on the staff. Hornets trying to throw 36 to nothing after the first half. You're listening to the Old School Cafe halftime show. If you hear the music in the background, the dance team is taking the field, and it's 1978 all over again. Joined here by Principal Joseph Eaton. Mr. Eaton, uh, 
The YMC. This is the YMCA. No, it's I stopped the ne- I, I I disco. Am, I, it is some kind of disco. I am no dance expert, Mr. Stein. Staying alive. Yes. Well, this is some kind of through the decades type dance. Uh, while we've got a moment here to talk dance team. First time we've had the dance team back in a while, and the ladies are taking some great enjoyment in it, as is the crowd. They are. I believe the crowd's enjoying it. I believe the, the kids are enjoying it. They have a good time with it, uh, and that's what it's all about, having a good time being together, doing something fun. You know, before the break, Coach Hurd mentioned, you're not new to the district. Been here a couple of years as assistant principal, but this year stepping into the uh, big office, you know, the main principal's job, and he mentioned all the all the cool stuff he's seen throughout the district. I just want to give you a, a chance to be effusive in your praise of what you've seen from these kids, especially this week. The kids came in this week, uh, and I've been nothing but thrilled with the way the kids have acted in the building. They came in. They were locked in. Uh, they really, for the most part, I feel like most of them have embraced the idea of Hornet Hustle, which I've tried to bring out this week. Uh, those important things, just giving it your best, giving it everything you've got, uh, working on those small things and letting those big things take care of themselves. Uh, I feel like they've really embraced that and they've done those small things this week. We've had a wonderful week at school. You talked uh, about a catchphrase there. You mentioned that it's something you have uh, incorporated as kind of the new catchphrase of the high school, Hornet Hustle. Hornet Hustle is, is in and of itself is a cool concept, but you made it an acronym. Uh, you can enlighten the folks out there on a, at the HNN and on the Haas as well. What Hornet Hustle is all about? Hornet Hustle, of course, you know, as educators, we're all about acronyms. Uh, <laughs> exactly. We're trying, we're trying to utilize those, but the H in Hustle stands for help. U stands for unite. S stands for strengthen, T stands for thrive, the L stands for learn, and then the E stands for engage. And these are all things that we as Hornets, as, as faculty, and as students do on a daily basis. I'm just wanting to bring those out to the forefront and focus on those things. And, and we do a great job at the high school of that, and we're going to continue to get better at that too. Uh, but that's those, those are skills and those are aspects of a Hornet that I think really stand out to me. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I love the acronym you mentioned. If you've ever been in teaching, as you said, the acronyms, I think teaching in the military are the two places acronyms make their most, uh, they, they shine the most. And Absolutely. So one more, hey, what's one more, right? And Hornet Hustle is a good one. Um, we're going to talk football here in a minute. Uh, Hornets have had a rough one so far, but uh, give you a chance to talk about some of the other things going on here at uh, Metcalf County, among the other extracurricular activities. Well, we've got a we've got a lot of opportunities going on at the high school. Uh, we've got our work ready and our college students. Uh, those those programs are both up and running. I know we're sending uh, our trade school students out to their locations, uh, like we have been the last several years. Getting good reports back from that from those uh, trade schools, how our students are performing, uh, and, and then also I mentioned that that college those college classes we have. And I would have to go back and check with Geneva Scroggy on this, but we have several students at the high school that are taking college classes online through different universities. We've got college kids that are traveling from the high school and going over to Glasgow, taking uh, early college classes over there weekly. Uh, all kinds of opportunities going on at the high school there for our students. Yeah, I'll just say just personally, my, my daughter taking two uh, college classes and an AP class as a sophomore. And that's pretty neat. It's a, it's a big opportunity, especially if you if our students can leave high school with, you know, enough credits to be a, a college yeah. sophomore whenever they whenever they leave our building. I mean, that's huge. That's excellent. Got the band obviously here tonight. We mentioned the dancing cheerleaders. Got a co-ed cheerleading team this year. Yes, huge uh, numbers for the cheerleaders. I'm super thrilled with the amount of cheerleaders we've got out. Miss Jessie's doing a wonderful job with those kids. Uh, she's got them really looking good, looking uh, better and better every week. I think that's what she's working for. And they've got on uh, uh, new new gigs. Yes, new, nice. yes, yes. yes. Uh, bands rocking it. Miss Riggins doing a great job with them. They're all decked out in the red, white, and blue tonight. And student sections uh, a little larger than normal tonight. I like that. I like seeing the kids out here enjoying being around each other and enjoying the football game, even though the game may not be going necessarily the way we want it to go. Yeah, to that effect, you, you've coached before. You've played. Uh, we've been on both sides of this as coaches. Coaches, players, announcers, all that. Uh, it's easier when you've got the 36 as opposed to the zero, but there are going to be nights when it's like this. And uh, 
what I've seen so far, I think you, you, you can speak to it, but it's a Campbellsville team that's going to give a lot of people fits this year. They have uh, – in ten years past, you know, Campbellsville's always had speed. Mm -hmm. the, the, some of the things that they've lacked maybe is, is size and, and some depth. But, I mean, Campbell, this Campbellsville team, they've got the speed and they've got size and they've got the depth. Uh, and when you've got those things, you can make some stuff. You make some stuff happen on the football field, and they have so far tonight. The Hornets uh, still trying to find themselves in this ball game. Had some good things happen here for the Hornets, but just can't quite piece it together for an entire extended, extended uh, drive. But um, so moving forward, obviously we have have uh, spring, uh, excuse me. Labor Day coming up. I'm getting ahead of myself a little. Um, <laughs> Don't be wishing away time, Stockton. <laughs> now, we may talk to you beforehand. We, ne we never know exactly when we'll talk to who. Uh, don't know how much you know about homecoming, but in a couple of weeks we'll be having homecoming. Why don't we talk just a little about that before you go? Uh, homecoming is going to be on, if I get this, if I remember this date, September 15th. I believe that's the uh, uh, Friday night that we're having homecoming. Against Wayne County. Yes, right? against Wayne County. We are going to be doing a homecoming parade that that day, uh, just like we did last year. Uh, I believe the community really enjoyed that. I enjoyed that yes, as assistant principal. I believe the students enjoyed being a part of that. Uh, I, I just really like when the school and the community can really come together like that and enjoy being being with each other, being a part of each other. I want to say, and uh, in all honesty, it's been a really great week so far up at the high school from I tell Coach Hurt, he gets to see it from the whole whole district level, you get to see it from the whole building level, I get to see it from my room and, and the hall level, but uh, see some really nice things from you from you all and you and uh, Miss Crow, Miss Morgan, and Mr. Clemens in a, in a new role this year and, as well. Yes, and yet Mr. Clemens is doing a wonderful job. He's come right in, hit the ground running. Uh, super proud to have him on the team uh, and, and look forward to this year with, with uh, the administrative staff, but I look forward to the year with the teachers. I've been in classrooms all week, and what I'm seeing going on, kids up, engaged, uh, communicating with each other, communicating with teachers. You know, I saw kids presenting in front of classes the third day of school. I mean, th those are skills and, and things that, you know, you may overlook, but those are those are huge things for these kids. A lot of them don't like getting up and doing that kind no, of No, they don't. Yeah. So uh, as the uh, principal of Metcalf County High School, I want to obviously uh, I did this when you got the job, but welcome again, and we look forward to a good year. I appreciate that very much, Mr. Stockton. Mr. Joseph Eaton, principal of Metcalf County High School here on the Old School Cafe. Post, uh, excuse me, halftime show. Five minutes, 25 seconds away from the three-minute stretch time. So about eight minutes, 20 seconds till we begin second half action. Let's take it back to Nick in the studio for a two-minute break. When we return here on this Old School Cafe halftime show, we'll have some stats from Coach Dina Hurt here on your home for the Hornets and the KY Sports Guys. 99 won the Hoss. Whopping off. That's right. Man, thank you for coming up and interviewing. What's that? There's a sweat. Yeah. Clearly, right in the middle. Yeah.
man of stock Tony, the KY Sports guys. Right now at half, it's 36-0 on the Old School Cafe. Halftime show Campbellsville with the lead. And now with those halftime stats, here is the main man, the Stockton. All righty. Offensively, the Hornets had a couple of drives get going a little bit. Just can't sustain it. Mason Essis has rushed the ball 11 times for 25 yards. Zach Purdue has a two-yard rush. Mason uh, Essis, one completion for 50 yards on that uh, Utah pass. A little jet sweep pitch forward that counts as a pass. That was caught by Byron Kirkland Lundy. He ran that one for those 50 yards. Kicking, Keegan Williams uh, been busy tonight with five punts, averaging almost 37 yards per punt, a long of 43. Hagen Patterson has three, uh, four returns, excuse me, on kickoffs for 23 yards. Zach Purdue has a return as well. Defensively, Hornets being led by Mason Estes with four tackles. Jackson Daugherty with one, C.J. White with a half, Byron Kirkland Lundy with three, Aiden Harrison with one and a half, Levi Nunn with one, Tyler Vibbert with two, and William Decker with one. We also had interceptions by Zach Purdue and by Aiden Harrison. And about 125 to go here in the halftime, then we'll have the three minute stretch period on this old school cafe halftime show. So let's take another two minute break. Here on your home for the Hornets and the KY Sports guys, 991 and the Hawks. School Cafe. About two minutes on the clock. We're about to have the second half. Right now, Campbellsville up 36. Oh, and uh, we knew it was going to be tough coming in. DeAndre Weathers, he's excellent. The quarterback, uh, Eastridge, is tremendous. They're, they're big, strong up front. It was a good football team that we're playing, and we're down a few folks. But as you go to the second half, and if you've ever coached anything in your life, you've been in situations like this, where you have to say, look, don't worry about the scoreboard. Just do things one at a time. Let's have a little bit of momentum. And look, if you get going, who knows what happens. But the point is, let's get some good things going that we can get on film. Yeah, you want to take some positive into next week. Nelson County coming in here. Uh, big school, you know, it's going to be another tough game. So you want to, you want to aid, have something to sort of, as you mentioned, on film to look at that's good. And then, two, you want to make sure you uh, – 
have just positive thoughts in your head as you go forward. It's easy to get down if you're facing a team that's going to make some things make some noise state level in 1A. I can't watch this team and say that there's a whole lot of better teams out here in 1A than, than Campbellsville, but the athleticism and the and the coaching they have, they look like a really really solid club. So just keep your head up, try to win a win a possession, win a win a uh, win a set of downs here. Get something positive going and uh, take it into the rest of the game in next next week. Now, obviously, the clock's going to be running. We try to give you a few warnings as the night wears on, but it's going to go fast. We won't have any stoppages except for uh, for timeouts here. Clock about winding down. So is the halftime show brought to you by the Old School Cafe. Much thanks to Principal Joseph Eaton for stopping by. I appreciate the interview that you did there. And uh, there were a couple of highlights. Byron Kirkland Lundy got loose. I believe that was a 60-yarder. Might have went in 50, but uh, 60 was from the 19 to the 31. And so, man, when he got out in the open field, you could see the potential there. Byron, just a junior. And so, as the season progresses, it's going to be fun watching the football in his hands. Hopefully, we'll get CT back at some point, get healthy again, get our defense back. Uh, healthy and, and the guys that are out there right now look it's just learning and gaining experience that'll do it for the halftime show 12 minutes on the clock we are ready for football action i'm going to take over the stats so uh stock tony if you want to do a little play by play i'll get a throw. It. all right so Contreras puts the toe to it it's going to go to zach purdue gonna have a little there cut it back of the field a nice positive about 10 yard return from Zach Purdue it's like Hagen Patterson number 21 normally is there he got injured running into his own man out there in the first half I'm looking I'm scanning the sidelines I don't see number 21 out he may have uh, he may call it an evening by the heel up the next week we'll, we'll see if we see Kagan the Hornets going to break the huddle here. The clock, as we mentioned, will continue to run. Mason Essence is going to be back in the pistol with Andrew Hills behind. Thank you so much. Two receivers nearest us. Byron Kirkland Lundy out by himself on the far side. Estes handoff Hills. He's hit back to the 35. He'll lose a yard. Just nothing going on on that right now. Going up the middle. Very, very little. The, the Campbellsville D-line, as you mentioned, big and strong. You can look out there and see some size. And that time is going to be a loss of, you're going to call it a long one or short two, however you like to look at it. Yeah, put it back at the 34. So let's call it second and 12 as the clock runs here. 36 old Campbellsville has the lead. Hustling in the play is... Uh, Aiden Harrison, number five. He's had a big interception tonight. We had a couple of plays in a row where we got uh, Zach Perdue, which is probably the highlight play of the night. Yeah, and then Aiden Harrison with a tremendous play as well. Two picks among the highlights. Estes rolls to his right. Looking out there trying to find Perdue just Good off the there, fingertips off the end, and incomplete. Exactly. Love the pass there. Mason put it where no one else could get to it. I like the pattern. I like the, the idea. Just couldn't quite execute it. Maybe needed one more yard uh, sideline or one more yard of field, excuse me. Clock continues to run. will be about uh, 9.45 when this play gets brought in. Two Hornets coming on. That's uh, number one, William Decker, and number 20, Colt DeVore. Mason Estes, the quarterback, still in the huddle. So if you go running clock, play clocks are out? Must be. Did you say that already? No, I didn't. I noticed it, but uh, that, that must be the case. Trips nearest us. Estes rolls to his right, sets up, lets her go, has a man, incomplete, trying for uh, Colt DeVore. Pass there intended for number 20. So we're going to get a flag here. Uh, Mason was hit as he threw. I'm not sure what they're going to the call. Uh, the line of we'll take that. I'm not sure if it was a late hit or not. Uh, maybe something else was happening. Officials are huddling up. Clock continues to run, even on penalties. So officials still talking this one out. If this were a late hit or a unnecessary roughness, it would be a first down. And now, well, now. Talking a lot. Yep. Clock continues to run. Let's see. Looks like they're going to, yep, call it a. Face mask. Face mask. So personal foul. Camels do a personal foul face mask. 
not sure the Campbell's little coaching staff. I'm not sure if he's mad at his player or mad at the officials. I think his players. So it will be a first down. That's the South Central Bank. First down for the Hornets. will move the ball out near midfield to the 49-yard line with a 10 mark. Hornets going to hustle into the huddle. Now hustling out, go send Twins to the right, Twins to the left, one back, that's Hills in the pistol behind Estes. Twins to the left, Twins to the right, stuck in the middle with you, man. Estes, design keeper, he spun backwards and snowed under for a loss of two. Keep going. Yeah, Banks in there again, just nothing, nothing doing. He tried to spread the field by putting your Twins out there, but Campbellsville, Defensive line strong, and then the, the, the linebacking core here tonight has been really, really solid for the Eagles. We hit the 725 mark. Play's going to come in Keegan Williams. Also, Ben Charlotte now bringing it in. Ben had an opportunity early. Tough play, but a play I'm sure he'd, he'd like to get. Be a good time to go back and give him another opportunity. Ben kind of new to football, but he's a, a good target out there. About 6'3", six, 6'4", yeah. six, good hands. Campbell's is playing this this uh, three deep. It looks like where they have the single safety split the field in thirds. That's just is going to keep it. Gets outside of the 50, the 45. Stays in bounds. Bounces off a man. Should have a first down at the Campbellsville 41. Yeah, that is going to be a South Central Bank. First down, Mason has is showing you his speed and his toughness on that one, as you mentioned. Bouncing off and now seems to be having trouble with his helmet snap again. That's definitely going to be something we're going to work on this week. Now, the good thing is we can work on it here because no play clock. You don't have to hustle this thing in. So they've got it fixed, it appears. Football at the 41 in Campbellsville territory. 36-0 Campbellsville has the lead, but the Hornets driving. First possession of the second half. Getting some points on the board. That would be uh, a small step right here. Byron is close to us by himself. Hand off Hills. Has a hole to the left. Good hole. Good blocking out there. He's going to have a first down inside the 30. And William Decker has uh, the South Central Bank first down by Andrew Hills there. Well blocked to get, well blocked to get uh, Andrew some room on the first and second level. William Decker doing a good job at the receiver spot, holding up his man. And so often there, you get a little greedy and get a holding call as a receiver on that one. William let him go in time. His man made the tackle, but not before Hills could get a lot of yardage extra because of that block. Five and a half on the clock as it continues to run. Third quarter, first and ten, Hornets heading towards that maroon zone. Haven't been inside it yet tonight, sitting at the 27. Hills again behind Estes. Estes, keeper. Can he get outside? He cannot. Man, good tackle there. Landon Coleman came out of nowhere. Yeah. The... Uh, I just can't say enough about this uh, Campbellsville linebacker crew. It's going to be second and 13, 4.50 to go here in this third quarter. Zach Purdue hustling in here. We're going to get a play brought in by Colt DeVore. Good to see Colt. Uh, he had a tough injury last year. I don't know if people remember that or not, but uh, he's a youngster out there getting some high school varsity experience. Going to be a good player. He goes out to the left side. Byron Kirkland Lundy out there with him. It's Byron to the outside of that. Now DeVore goes in motion. Fake the pitch. Estes throws it down looking for Purdue. Has him, and it's just out away from the outstretched arms of Purdue. So incomplete. Look, I love a few things about that one. Mason hangs in there, takes a hit to deliver that ball. He knew he was going to get hit. Secondly, even though Mason got hit, there was still plenty of time for that sort of slow development play to work. Zach made a nice, ran a nice route. Mason put it right where he needed to, maybe just out of the reach of Tad. But I love everything about that play other than the result not being a touchdown. 340 to go as Harrison runs the play in. It's just looking for the, toward the sideline. And now Keegan Williams coming in. 
Hornets not in any hurry. They've had the ball this entire third quarter as the clock has been running. Essence huddles them up now. Come out, going to send Ben Shirley nearest to us. Hayden Harrison. And they got the power, offset power eye from the pistol. Essence takes up the middle. Hit. Thrown back for. Let's call it, uh, let's call it get back to the line of scrimmage before he got thrown back. It's going to bring up fourth and 13 for the Hornets on the 30 yard line. Hit a two minute, 50 second mark. No gain on the play. It'll be fourth down at 13. Saw that play earlier with the with the little uh, slow developer on the on the corner to Harrison. Just uh, couldn't quite uh, produce. Excuse me, couldn't quite bring it in. So it's the Hornets uh, dial up here. A lot of lot of players coming in and out. It's almost like a hockey ship. <laughs> it really is. A lot of people running on and off the field. As long as we end up with 11 on each side, I think we're okay. Getting some guys of varsity experience here. Good to see. A little more of a tie with the trips. Yes, here. I agree. Yes, tie formation trips to the near side. The football on the far hash. Estes fakes the pitch. They're going back to it. He gets hit again. Tosses it up in the air and uh, was almost caught by Coach LJ. Look, Mason took a lick right there. It's going to be a turnover on Downs. Yeah, so it's 155 and counting. Campbell's will take this ball over. We'll see uh, who they send out, if they will send back Eastridge and the starting lineup, or maybe we'll see some of Rowan Pettit here, number 15. Pettit on the years had quite a few yards passing. We'll see if, uh, if he gets out there. It's got to be a name familiar to uh, Medcalf County fans. Uh, I believe maybe the nephew of John Pettit, the head coach over at Monroe. And David Pettit has been at Campbellsville a long time, doing great work there. You might remember David Pettit, student taught. I remember. At I was, I was County here. High School. There you go. But you've been around a while. I've been around a while. They've sent the <laughs> Easter, they do send Eastridge back in, but they put him under center here, eye formation. Snap comes, Eastridge turns, fakes the handoff, rolling right, looking across the field. The number one, that is uh, side bottom, can't complete it. Going to bring up second and ten for under a minute. Interesting play caller. Yeah, uh, go and play action. Got to, got to water a couple things. Now, Eastridge, only a, a sophomore, but you can tell with that arm, he's probably hoping to get some looks, maybe wanting to show off a little of, of what he can do here. Sure. Uh, good play action fake, but uh, couldn't quite complete the side bottom. Same formation again. Eastridge under center, just a straight eye handoff this time. Flag flies. We're going to have a hold, so this would have been a first down, but let's bring that one back. I believe that will take us to the end of the quarter. Most likely. And it will. So at the end of three, Hornets trail 36 to nothing to Campbellsville. We'll have a penalty when we come back. They're going to march it off, and the third quarter ends. Let's take a quick 30-second break here in your home for the Hornets and the KY Sports Guys. 9 one of the Hawks. Chop block. That's a 10-yard penalty. It's going to be second down and 20 to go after we flip the field here. Welcome back, everybody. Let's talk Tony along with Coach Jay Hurt. Hornets trailing 36 to nothing. Fourth quarter about to commence with a running clock. Campbellsville just had a penalty. It's going to bring up second 20 when they return to the field. Get you some quick stats. Mason S is 15 rushes for 32 yards. Andrew Hills, seven rushes for 12. Zach Purdue with a two-yard rush. Mason S is with a completion for 50. Byron Kirkland, Kirkland Lundy with a catch for 50. Keegan Williams 
You said it was 60, though, right? I think it was 60, yeah. but either way. Keep going. Tomato, Keegan, tomato. Keegan Williams, five punts for a 36.8-yard average. Defensively, Mason S is still leading with four tackles. All right, I'll let you take a little play-by-play -play here. I'm going to get ready for this next one on the stat sheet. Campbellsville sends twins both sides, one back in the backfield. Shotgun for Eastrich. He gets a snap. That may be, that's Pettit actually out there. Now they did for the uh, fourth quarter. I've seen in Ron Pettit, number 15. He throws that one low on the cross of pattern, so it's going to be third and 20. Now, if I'm totally wrong about who that is, I apologize. I uh, may have been off base. It's Elder. He uh, Pettit. Yeah. The sophomore. Sure. On the year, he has uh, shown prowess at the passing. Uh, at the skill of passing, let's see, he's got uh, 115 yards on four, three completions. Send a man in motion. Pettit asks for the football, and he has it. He rolls to his left. Sets up, has a man complete. It's going to be short of the first down, though. It'll be fourth down at about the 34. Hornets uh, look to be forcing their first punt here of the night. Campbellsville should be sending on the punting unit with fourth and six, fourth and five on their own 35. 10.40 to go in the fourth quarter. 36 old Campbellsville has the advantage. And Contreras, who's been a good kicker. Has, He's done uh, well. Yeah, he? had all the uh, four straight extra points before the fifth one was a two-point conversion. He's going to go back for his first punt of the evening. Going to send Byron Kirkland Lundy deep. We'll see if they kick to him. Standing at about his own 30, the punter Contreras it is on 22. High snap and a slow one at that. Kick is low. Byron has it at the 29. Makes a man miss. He's bottled up, but he gets away. He heads out to the right side. He's at the 40, the 45. Hit from behind. He's still going past the 50 and the 45. Down to the 44. What a return. Byron, Kirkland, Lundy. Yeah, uh, Byron. Not sure if he's tired, but uh, yeah, they're helping him up now. So just, just a little fatigued after that run. He ran about 30 yards up, and probably 30 yards or 40 or more side to side. If you tried to do a tracker on that, it would be zigzagging all over the place. A lot of east and west, but then he turned yeah. it up. They're actually helping him off the field, so there may there may be a little bit of a a little bit of a strain. Or again, tonight cramping could be an issue. Oh yeah, we'll see uh, if Sam Perry. Gets Byron on the, on the table. Nose of the football directly at the 45 in Campbellsville territory. Gonna you keep going, by the way. I think it's Gavin looks in. to be coming in for uh, to take the snaps here for the Hornets. They're going to send Twins out left, Ben Shirley and Zach Purdue. Going to send Aiden Harrison far right. Cavan in the pistol with Hills behind. Handoff inside Hills. Going to be hit there, but a gain of about two. Gonna bring up second and eight. As the clock hits 8.45 here. Hornets get a chance to get uh, Ezzy Cavan some, some minutes here. You mentioned he had quite a bit of time with Mason Essis' injuries last year to play, but uh, hadn't seen him this year until, until now at the quarterback position. Eight and a half to go in the game. Hornets looking to get on the scoreboard. Trail this one, 36-0 Campbellsville again. Just tip your hat. Very good football team. And the uh, white jerseys with the purple pants. Cavan, handoff, Hills, good hole, 40. Close to the first down, I think he's about a half a yard short. Yeah, he's gonna be just a tad bit short, but a good hole, as you mentioned, Hills hits it. It's gonna be third and short. Now you get the uh, opportunity, I was like second and short, to if you've got time set back and if you'd like to throw one, you know, you've got, uh, You've got not much to gain on fourth down. If you have to go for it, we'll see what the Hornets do. It's been Shirley running the play in. You talk about folks like Ezzy, Ben, Andrew Hills, all these guys. I uh, see Aiden Harrison splitting out wide nearest to us. A lot of good reps for these young guys. Man in motion. They toss it to him. That is Colt DeVore. Good cut there. He gets right up the middle. On a play that might have been designed to come outside, it gets the first down. I think you're exactly right on that South Central Bank first down. That's just uh, instinctive by Colton Gore. 
it looked like that play, the, the block was blocking back inside. Cole's supposed to go around it, but there was no nothing there, and he cuts it up and gets the three yards. But more importantly, again, that South Central Bank first down. Seven minutes to go here as the play comes in. You know, the Hornets will love to punch one in right here. Absolutely. It's, uh, look, you're just trying to gain some pods of momentum. As you head towards district play next week, you mentioned it, Nelson County coming to town. Looks like Kevin uh, Ezzy, rather, is going to be thrown down back to 42. Tried to hand it off. Not sure what the play was, but it's yeah. going to be a sack, I suppose. Yeah, not sure if it's a broken, uh, broken play or not, but always get a little concerned when you see somebody get sort of flung down like that, that their head hits the turf that time. Ezzy kept his head uh, up, did not. So it's going to bring up second and a long 17, we'll call it. Seeing uh, Taylor Thurman running a play in here. Levi Nunn's going to split out nearest us. Thurman and Purdue on the far side in twins. Snap comes here. Uh, Kevin pitches it back to 48. That's Ethan Rakes seeing this first run, I believe, of the year. is going to lose about two. On the play, Rakes, the freshman. You mentioned guys getting some time. There's Ethan getting into the action. 48 coming out of the backfield. Interesting number. You know, numbers anymore. What, what are numbers these days, right? <laughs> it's not like it used to be, is it? The NFL used to be really strict about that stuff. They may still be. I don't know. No, I don't think they are. But now was John Riggins 44. Yeah, running backs can be in the 40s. Yeah. 48 is, is a legal running back number. Just not. It's, it's kind of. I remember Gerald Riggs was 42 when he played for the Falcons. Yeah. He was a big fan. 5-10 to go. Third and a long, long way. As he rolls to his left, throws it out there. Has a man, but it's knocked away. Almost picked. That was uh, Cole DeVore who broke that one up. Something was uh, was off, I believe, in that pattern. Cole DeVore and Ben Shirley was at the same spot. One of the guys probably ran the wrong pattern. As he put it out there, but just a little too much air under it. 445. Bring up fourth and a uh, bunch. Are they going to punt it? I believe they are. I know you don't normally get just super excited about punting, but Keegan Williams has been so good. I I enjoy watching him punt. I don't want to do it too much. No, I don't want it. But he's he's obviously in contention again for for player of the game here tonight with his punt. Stands back at his own 43. Snaps back. That's a good one. Kick his way high, end over end, and shorts going to land at about the 20. Take a great bounce out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. They're going to say it hit the sideline at the 22. All right, so with 4.05 to go, we'll keep it right here. The clock continues to run. It may be the last possession of the game. I want to thank all of our season sponsors, Mia Pueblo, Mexican Restaurant, Miller Family Dentistry, SCRTC, Edmonton State Bank, Butler Funeral Home, Mayor Doug Smith and City Council, Kingsford Manufacturing, Last Thompson Insurance, Student Financial, MC Shirt Shop and Old School Cafe, Edmonton Hometown Jewelers, Brookshire Construction, Torina Sloan, Kentucky Farm Bureau, South Central Bank, Shannon Fields, Metcalf County Clerk, MK Shopmore, and box office videos, the printing press, and make after rugs. And stay tuned. We'll have the Kentucky Farm Bureau with Tarina Sloan. Post-game show in the Berkshire Construction. Player of the game when this one is over in about three minutes and 20 seconds. Again, Campbellsville's had the better of it tonight. Clock continues to run. Campbellsville has yet to approach the line of scrimmage. You know, theoretically... If there's no play clock, they wouldn't have to run a play here. No, right? we could we could all just shake hands and go to the house, I suppose. But you want to get the young guys yeah, a couple of snaps. I, I think so, too, but I just hadn't considered that uh, until just now. First and ten, Campbellsville. It's petted at the quarterback spot. He asked for the football, and he has it handoff. That's number two, Devin Kinzer. He has a decent hole. He's out to the left side, has some space. We haven't brought him down yet. He's past the 50. I believe that's C.J. White who's going to get credit for that tackle D, but Kinzer, as you mentioned, uh, got out into some space and just uh, one, one fast Campbellsville player after the other showing the speed as well. That was Kinzer, the junior. Listen as a fullback. It's going to bring up first and 10, 220 to go. Campbellsville out of the huddle. Pettit 
in the gun. Twins on both sides. Man in motion. Pettit hands it off on the jet sweep. Cutting back. It's going to be about a gain of a five. Looks like maybe the ball's out. I don't know. There's some scrapping on the field. We'll see. No, no sign from the official. So it's going to be second down and five. Any idea on the tackle? A lot of Hornets were in there. I see uh, Braden Page coming out of there. That's who I saw, 32, Braden Page. Everybody's in agreement. Daniel Bragg as well, yeah. All right. It'll be second down and a short five for the Eagles. Clock at 1.30 now. Pet it again. Same handoff. This will be a first down. Looks like maybe Levi Nunn that time. Yeah, he won Levi there Nunn. That's the second tackle on the night. I believe he may have done the very first tackle of the well, evening. As we hit one minute, 15 and seconds to go here in this one. You like to see those guys out there. Levi, obviously not going the way the Hornets hoped it to be tonight. But Levi is getting his moment and is excited about the tackle. Again, stay with us. The post-game show brought to you tonight by Kentucky Farm Bureau. Tarina Sloan will have the play of the game brought to you by Brookshire Construction. All that coming up in about 50 seconds. I don't know if Campbellsville is going to snap another one or not. They might. One more play probably will do it as the clock runs. Almost victory formation. And I, I say almost like it is. Victory formation for Campbellsville. Look, they're going to walk out of here as uh, Pettit kneels on it with a 36-0 victory, a well-deserved one. The Hornets will regroup, try it again next week against Nelson County right here. Again, final score tonight is 36-0. Campbellsville takes this one. Stay with us. The post-game show brought to you by Kentucky Farm Bureau, Trina Sloan, coming up after a two-minute break. It's your home for Hornet Sports, the KY Sports Guys, 99-1 The Hawks.